a record. Yes, okay, great. All right. Okay, thanks a lot for uh, having me. Um, so some of those who know me know that I work a lot on, on uh, topological phases in uh, periodically driven systems, in Floquet systems. So this is going to be a lot, I mean, I'm going to present some work uh, kind of in this direction. Um, and in particular, uh, I, I want to basically fo uh, focus in this talk on, on kind of systems that are, you know, clo uh, kind of closer to a solid state realization. I'll try to understand, um, you know, what kind of phases we can induce in, a, in, in solid state uh, like systems um, with periodic drives. And, and I'll show you that, you know, uh, I'll show you that the, the setup kind of a, a very generic setup can actually lead to both uh, topological phases, but actually to also to correlative phases. Uh, which have some sort of interesting uh, ferromagnetic pneumatic uh, order parameters, um, and and uh, yeah, I think I think this is just shows that you know that um, you know that there's a lot of uh, room to find new phase of matter. The, the phase of matter I'm going to discuss are mostly kind of unique to to okay systems in the sense that they have some feature which is only possible uh, in time dependent system, and I think uh, you know there's lots yet to be explored okay so so let me begin um so okay so kind of the, the overall uh setup is uh we want to do floquet engineering right so we want to basically take some cis quantum system or material uh and as in the as the alchemist did we want to shine some uh light uh coherent light um with some prescribed frequencies and polarization. Uh, and, and we basically want to change the properties of this of the band structure or, or the or the basically electronic properties of this material. Uh, and, and I'll discuss two possible changes you could you could uh, induce. One of them you can induce a change in the topology of the system. That's something I've been discussing a long for a long time. Uh, but you can also basically, uh, by using this Floquet engineering uh, route, uh, also induce geometric properties, uh, change of the geometric properties of the band structure. Uh, and in particular, what I mean by that, I mean, you could if you change the band structure using this Floquet engineering, you could uh, induce um, changes on the density of states. Uh, and you could use that basically to induce uh correlated phases um that kind of live off this this uh enhanced density states that you've induced and i'll, I'll discuss in the specifics in, in a second um so so just to 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 remind you of this point you know if we have a large if you have a large density of states you know that that promotes all kinds of correlated phases you know fraction quantum hall effect uh, it, it induces in, in the twisted binary systems, it induces all kinds of uh, uh, insulators and superconducting phases. Um, and, and uh, you know, may, maybe the most uh, simple or, or famous example of this is the stone of ferromagnetism. Uh, and, and if you just go back to ferromagnetism, stone of ferromagnetism, you just remember that the criterion of that is that the density of states at the Fermi energy is larger than the interaction scale, um, inverse of the interaction scale. So, so basically, again, just to, to uh, again, uh, try this point is that, uh, you know, if, if you can induce a large density of states, you might be in the game of, uh, of somehow inducing a new phase uh, of a, a correlated, new correlated uh, state of electron. Okay. So, so two kind of just examples of dynamical uh, control of band topology that have been studied a lot are one of them uh, is the situation uh, that we have uh, something like a Dirac system, okay, uh, like in graphene. And in a Dirac system, uh, for example, the Dirac is system, you know, it's on the verge of being topological. If you, uh, for example, shine strictly polarized light incident to the two dimensional plane, you'll open a gap in the Dirac point. Uh, 
Um, so that's somehow uh, an off resonant effect. Um, sorry. Uh, that's an off resonant effect um, that basically comes from somehow uh, a two photon uh, process. Uh, different different type of effects could be could arise just by resonances. So um, if you're driving a resonant uh, transition between two bands, resonant meaning that you're using a frequency uh, which just creates a resonance between say two bands between say the valence and conduction band. That can also uh, create some sort of effective band inversion and completely change the topology and also the geometry of the bands. And in this talk, uh, I'll, I'll focus on this right hand side, the, the, this resonant uh, uh, case, uh, which will, I'll show you can access both topological as well as uh, correlated phases. And there, you know, there, I won't go over these, but there are many experiments, both in solid state uh, and you know, optical systems, cold atom systems um, of, of these uh, of these ideas. Uh, and then, then we come to the situation if we really want to, you know, okay, so many of the cleanest examples of going back to the experiments of, the, of these fate, of these effects uh, were done in either optical or cold atom systems. But in, in the solid state systems, the situation is much more complicated because you know, the, you cannot avoid having electron-electron interactions. And, and electron, electron interactions can have a dramatic effect on the dynamics, um, basically because the steady states of the systems of, of, the, of kind of generic electronic systems, if, if, they're, if you have an electronic system which is just uh, closed, it's not in any contact with any heat path, uh, and you're driving it, that type of system actually wants to increase the de entropy density basically indefinitely or to, to maximum possible. Uh, and and, and this, this problem basically arises because, uh, because in, in, in a Floquet system, uh, maybe I should just remind you, in a Floquet system, we're, we're, uh, you know, we're thinking about, in, in, we're replacing basically the energy by a quasi energy um, which is kind of defined modulo omega. Uh, omega is the driving frequency. And, you know, we could still plot Floquet block bands. You know, with, these are bands which plot the, you know, show the quasi energy versus the crystal momentum. And we can discuss basically the uh, distribution of electrons in these bands. So this is kind of what's drawn here, some distribution of electrons uh, in, in this red band. Uh, the, the problem is that uh, in, in a Floquet system, unlike in a, in a, in a static system, in an equilibrium system, um, you know, electron electron scattering does not necessarily have to uh, preserve the total quasi energy. So if you think about the, the sum of the quasi energy of the incoming electron, uh, does not have to be equal to the sum of the quasi energies of the outgoing electron. Uh, but in fact, uh, it, 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 this, this quality is only can only be preserved mod omega. So a, you can have a scattering process like this, uh, where you know one one electron kind of scatters to a higher energy. This higher we should put in quotation mark, but to uh, um, a, a quasi energy band with a completely different quasi energy. But the total quasi energy is still preserved mod mod omega. Okay, so this type of process that I'm drawing here. It's possible in the Floquet system, but it's not possible in a static system. And that makes basically all the difference. And these type of processes basically lead to kind of very, very rapid mixing generically. Uh, and basically it would lead to having basically a very quickly having an infinite temperature state. If you look, think about the distribution of electrons uh, in the system. Okay, so so. So we need to kind of consider this question more seriously. Can, can we induce you know, topological and correlated phenomena by driving a many-body system in light of having you know, uh, interactions? Or are we all, always going to end up with some very hot and, and featureless state? And, and there are several routes going at this. Um, what, one of them is basically to couple the system to an external heat bath that would stabilize some sort of steady state. And, you know, that's also the generic situation in a solid state system. The, the electrons are always coupled to 
uh, phonons and also to electromagnetic uh, environment uh, for, for which they can basically uh, emit energy to. Um, and uh, so, and, and in this talk, I'll, I'll mostly kind of consider uh, this uh, type of system. Um, there's other uh, possible ways to induce uh, steady states. Uh, for example, the situation where you, you have uh, strong disorder and localization, and, and uh, this can lead you basically to, to a situation where the Floquet system is many body localized. Uh, and, uh, and, and therefore, you know, the, this uh, energy uh, saturates at some finite value. Uh, and, and can still see interesting states. Another possible direction, uh, third one is to, okay, maybe give up on, on uh, steady states in infinite time, but to observe kind of interesting long-lived transients or, you know, or uh, pre-thermal states or, or sometimes quasi-steady states. Uh, and also there, you know, there, there could be many interesting phenomena that, you know, that, that survive for a time which could be exponentially even exponentially long in some parameters of the system okay but for this talk i'm, I'm gonna uh, mostly focus on on this uh external heat path uh, scenario uh and i want to basically also in this talk and, and as i said i'm going to mostly be discussing this resonant case and i i want to kind of dive dive into the details there a little bit because i really want to study the geometry of the bands that you know result from from uh, basically driving this resonant transition. Um, okay, so so yeah, so yeah. Let, let's take a simple model for for a, you know a two band system like you know maybe a uh, something that could be a churn insulator. Um, so you know it's a two band system. Uh, we describe it by a two-by-two -two matrix, which basically maps uh, the Brillouin zone basically to the unit sphere. Uh, if we assume that uh, there's a band gap, right? So this basically this vector d has to be different from zero everywhere, and then we can normalize it. Uh, and then you know there's two possible situations. One one of them, sorry, one of them in which the Brillouin zone, the mapping from the Brillouin zone to the unit sphere covers the full sphere. That's a topological phase, and one of them where uh, the mapping from the Brillouin zone to the unit sphere, um, you know, does not cover the full sphere, which is topologically equivalent for to mapping all of the Brillouin zone to a point. So this, these two situ situations can be deformed one into each other. Um, okay, and and uh, so this this is just a model we could think about for a, a, a two. A two band system and, and let's think about the two band system that's actually starts off in a trivial phase um, and you know so here uh, I have uh, plotted a cartoon so what this cartoon shows that you know this pseudo spin direction the pseudo spin is this direction of this d vector okay in the valence band uh, is basically more or less pointing somewhere towards the north pole of this unit sphere okay uh, and and in this uh, conduction band it, it more or less plots in the in the south towards the south pole of the unit sphere of course these are uh, strongly related to each other uh, and this for example would be a situation you know if i just do a low k expansion near the the, the gamma point I, you know for example if you take both the uh, mass parameter and this uh, v parameter to be positive this is the situation you'd see okay so basically this is this this cartoon is a cartoon of a non of a trivial system no topology or, or truly topologically trivial uh, because we're not covering the full sphere note that if the if the sign of v was different for example then we'd have an opposite situation because at large k these uh, pseudo spins would rotate back down to the south pole. So if, if B was negative here, we'd have a top, uh, basically a full covering of the unit sphere, and this will be a top, uh, topological phase, chair number one. But for now, uh, we are uh, dealing with this, you know, we're starting off with a situation where uh, both of these parameters are positive, and uh, 
and we're starting off in a pretty good phase. And um, right, so we're starting off in a pretty good phase. And now I'm adding a drive, which is resonant. Um, in some kind of with some arbitrary polarization. And uh, to understand what's going on, I, I basically go to a rotating frame. Um, and in the rotating frame, uh, I basically shift one of the bands by omega. And now these bands overlap and uh, a gap is open, right? Because basically there is a non, there's, you know, these bands intersect and there is a non-zero matrix element, element generically between them. Uh, which opens the gap. But now if I look at this new pseudospin configuration, now I see that in this new band, you know, you start from the south, you know, near the gamma point, your k equals zero, say in this kind of lower band, you start from, from the pseudospin pointing down and at infinite k or far away from the gamma point, the spin would be pointing back up. And in the middle, there'll be some transition between these two. So now this looks more like a topological situation because there, it looks like we're covering the full sphere, at least up to this cartoon that I've drawn. Okay. Um, so, so at least we, we're touching these two points, both the North Pole and the South Pole. Um, now you need to be, take a little bit more care in, in, in understanding when, when this is sufficient information to have a topological phase. I will not go into this. Uh, but generic, I mean, you can choose the, the, the polarization, for example, if you choose circularly polarized light or, or, or other types of coupling between the bands, production band, you generically you get a topological phase. And let's just uh, see how this band, band structure would look like. So we've created a resonance between the, these two bands between the valence and conduction band. So now we have like this sort of uh, volcano shape, or you know, if I turn it upside down, it's going to be Mexican head shape uh, band structure. Okay. And you know, if I look at the spin direction in the two-dimensional uh, Brillouin zone, right, that's pointing say down near k equals zero, it's pointing up at large k's, but in the middle there is a vortex. Uh, going around, uh, um, you know, the k equals zero. So, okay, so, so two interesting observations here. One, uh, there is a very large density of state. That basically, the, there is a divergence of the density of states uh, due to the uh, like even Hof singularity, right where the resonance occurs. Okay, so there the the density state actually diverges as, as one of the square roots of epsilon, the, the quasi energy. Um, and uh, another point, let's see if I have this on the next slide. Yeah, and another point is that, you know, I, when I plot this uh, pseudospin configuration, I plotted at some particular time. Really, the, this spin configuration is actually rotating as a function of time. It's, it's going to rotate, the, the, the time dependence will be most significant on the resonance, because on the resonance, we have a hybridization between the valence and conduction band. And basically the phase of this uh, superposition rotates, uh, as it, or, you know, it changes the function of time uh, with frequency omega, which is the frequency of the drive. Okay, so we have some sort of rotation of the pseudo-spin state at the resonance. And, you know, if, if, I, if I look at the state, this is a topological system, I could have edge states, uh, so, in, in terms of the band structure, it's topological band structure, uh, um, you know, with all the properties. So, you, you now have time dependent floquet states in the gap. Um, and in terms of the geometry, um, you know, one basically interesting analogy is to compare this to a Rashba uh, spin orbit couple band, right? Because uh, you know, if you have Rashba spin orbit coupling, you also have this type of Mexican hat potential. Uh, it's, not a, it's not a potential, but it's a Mexican hat type uh, minima uh, in your dispersion, which also has a divergent density of states and also has this uh, spin configuration, which basically you know, creates a vortex uh, around k equals zero. So this is a very uh, 
you know, it's, it's an analogous situation here. Uh, you know, we, we, here we've induced this, uh, uh, I mean, the difference between the Rashba and, and this, in the Foucault situation, and of course, in the Foucault situation, we've induced um, the, you know, we've induced this Mexican hat dispersion with the drive, and also we, there's no time versus symmetry. Okay, so there, there is just uh, basically a single, uh, you know, at the Fermi level, there is there's just a, uh, you know, the, 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 um, a single non-degenerate state at each moment. Um, okay, so one, one interesting thing that can happen if we think about, uh, you know, what, 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 an, what interesting could happen in this rush bus spin orbit coupling bands if we have interactions, what correlated state could arise uh, you know, the, the, um, one interesting phase that could occur in equilibrium uh, is, is a phase basically which is like a pneumatic uh, or ferromagnetic pneumatic state. Uh, so how would that uh, go? Uh, so you, you know, without interaction, you start feeling uh, these Rashba spin orbit cu coupled bands up to some Fermi level, which we assume is kind of low close to uh, the divergence of the, of the density of states. And due to the large density of states, uh, the en system energetically prefers actually to basically break symmetry uh, and basically have a Fermi surface, uh, which you know, occupies uh, you know, some sort of banana shape area uh, in the Brillouin zone and, and thereby also uh, you know, it has some sort of non-zero magnetic moment. Okay. Uh, and actually, there, there, in fact, there is a variety of uh, possible phases here, which actually depend on what type of interaction. For example, the type of phase you get uh, in the spin orbit couple band might depend on, say, the range of the interactions and, and so forth. So this is just one possible phase. Okay. So, you know, the interesting question is, whether we could get these type of correlated phases also in the Floquet bands that we've induced. Okay. Uh, of course, you know, we have to come, you know, ask all of these questions. So first, can we see uh, anything, you know, uh, any of the topology or any of the, these correlated phenomena in the system where we're actually driving it, uh, you know, in, in the presence of interactions? So this is the question I, I want to address in this talk. So I, let me stop now and see if there are any questions uh, so far. Okay. Um, okay. So so right. So so to 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 so again I'm, I'm going to focus on. Um, on the system, uh, on, on an electronic system, which is coupled to an external heat bath. Um, and, you know, as we also discussed in the case of electron electron scattering, also the, the you know, also uh, the interactions and scattering from, with the, say, a bosonic bath, which could be either phonons or photons, can also in, in, in the Floquet system have two flavors, if you want, or two basic kinds of scattering. One of them is the scattering which in which the quasi energy of the uh, the total quasi energy of the electron plus say the phonon uh, is conserved, like in this scattering or in this type of scattering. Uh, so here the, the total quasi energy before and after would be conserved, and you could also have this type of uh, scattering in which kind of the electron say falls off the lower band uh, and reappears on this upper band. Uh, and now the, 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 the total quasi energy before and after the scattering process uh, differs by, by the driving frequency. Okay. Uh, in particular, uh, also if we, we can consider a situation where, uh, you know, in, in, in the solid, we have kind of two important types of transitions that we want to think about. One of them is, uh, you know, in our interaction with the electromagnetic environment. And basically what this leads to in solids is like it leads to radiative recombination. So an electron 
starting in the uh, say valence band. In, this is in the static system, in an equilibrium system or in a non-driven system. Electron starting off. If you put an electron in the uh, conduction band, uh, it could basically re recombine with a hole in the valence band and emit a photon. Uh, I mean, and emit a photon. Okay, and we'll call this radiative recombination. Um, and this would be uh, manifestly interband transition. This would be a transition between the conduction and valence band. Uh, and uh, another type of interaction would be uh, pho with phonons, uh, which and phonons usually lead to in at least acoustic phonons usually lead to interband transitions. Okay, so that's in a, in the static system. In the driven system, the situation is a bit more complicated because. Uh, First, uh, if you notice uh, that the radiative recombination is now, uh, if, at if at least I draw the bands in this way, okay, this is a particular way of drawing them. In this way, uh, I, uh, the, the radiative re recombination actually becomes a floquet club process. Floquet, maybe I should have said that. The, the, the processes uh, that don't conserve the quasi energy Right, uh, in which the quasi energy is changed by h bar omega. Uh, I call them floquet unclub processes. So, because this kind of uh, non conservation modulo omega, you know, it's very reminiscent of uh, just unclub scattering in a, in a crystal, with momentum unclub scattering. Okay. So, the radiative transition, the radiative recombination transition, this is an electron starting here. Uh, it starts off in the uh, uh, in the valence band, and you know it, it radiatively combines and reappears on the, in, in the uh, in the in the uh, valence band. But now this valence band is actually a part of this upper band here. Okay, so the colors, if you want, the colors, the, the blue colors are the valence band, and the red colors are the conduction band. Okay, so this is the radiative recombination, and also because of this hybridization that occurs near the resonance uh, point or resonance ring, uh, the phonon scattering can lead both to interband and interband transitions because uh, you know, near this resonance, the states are strong hybridization of both the valence and conduction band. Okay. Can I ask something? When you, yeah. say, when you say valence and conduction band here, you mean in the static model yeah. and you're just sort of yeah. showing us yeah, thank you. Yeah, so when I'm going to say uh, balance and conduction, I'm referring to the static system. And when I use the language of lower and upper band, uh, this is uh, uh, this is I'm referring to the floquet states. Okay, now lower and upper in the floquet uh, bands are, uh, it, it's a matter of uh, gauge. You can choose a different gauge in which you can reverse the order, but I'll, I'll always use this gauge, okay, where uh, where the lower Floquet band uh, at, at, uh, at, at momenta near the end of the, end of the Brillouin zone is, is valence over here and conduction near K equals zero. That's the Floquet bands. That's the lower Floquet band. And, uh, uh, and valence and conduction refer to the original non-driven band structure. Okay, does that answer your question? Yes, you can also know. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Great. Okay. So, 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 you, okay. The, the kind of the situation is more confusing uh, in, in the Floquet system. We could still track it, and I'll show you we can. Uh, but one, one important thing I, I want to reach at the solution of this uh, system that has, uh, you know, system back interactions. But it's always good to have a starting point uh, to, to kind of protrude around. And, and the starting point is the following observation. If I turn off, and this is actually an important observation that's actually due to the grandfather of Viktor Galitsky uh, in the paper from the 60s or something. Um, so you have to, this observation says the following. If I, Somehow turn off, I, I turn off these uh, Floquet-Umpla processes. 
And you know, there are various ways to do that, uh, either just erasing the, the kinetic equation by hand or somehow tuning the band structure on all the, all the properties of the bath so that there's just no matrix elements. You know, choose your own way. If I just somehow turn them off, then uh, the steady state of the system, you can prove that it's actually a Gibbs state uh, where the Gibbs state is a Gibbs state of the flow of a Fouquet band, right? Where the, where the, you know, the, the electrons basically would be in a Fermi Dirac distribution in terms of the Fouquet band, okay? This would be the state of this, the steady state of the system at infinite time uh, where, uh, well, if you allow me to turn off these Fouquet unplugged processes. Can I ask another question since you yeah. are <laughs> So I mean, because okay, your language is a bit. Uh, I'm, I'm not used to it. Can I can I understand what you're saying to be, if I did a quasi energy band like they were static bands, so I basically only allow things not modular omega, like let like then that's what you're saying. That in that case, I'd have feeling of the Gibbs state. Yeah, is that correct? Yeah, yeah. Then okay. then then the then basically then uh, it's not even actually the half feeling is not important. So no, no, exactly, exactly. All you're saying yeah, is if I didn't I have the mod right omega. Now. Yeah, I can erase the half feeling from here. So, the, the, so you're saying if I didn't have the mod omega thing, it yeah. would do the usual term of, okay, yeah, I see. Yeah. Okay. Right, and this is not a perturbative statement or anything. This is just, uh, uh, you know, this is a very general statement. If you do not uh, allow any process that, that ha uh, does not conserve quasi energy, um, or, you know, does not conserve even mod omega, I'm not allowing mod omega conservation, then you have a Gibbs state which uh, is equal to the Fermi, Fermi drug distribution in terms of the Floquet band, okay? Now, in that, set, in that case, then, you know, all of a sudden, the, this gauge becomes uh, broken. So uh, now there is a difference between the lower band and upper band. The lower band is now full. Say it's a half, it's a, let's think about half field system. So the lower band would now be full, the upper band would be empty. Uh, you know, if there's an edge state, it would have some Fermi level in the edge state. It, it would look like a topological insulator, uh, you know, a, a regular topological insulator. Now, one question is, of course, that comes into mind is what broke the gauge? I mean, what, how does the system know which, which way is up and which way is down? Because, you know, the, the quasi energy lives on a circle, right? It lives on a circle basically from zero to omega, or we identify zero omega. So, what the, the thing that broke symmetry, the symmetry here is the, is the phonons, or the, right? Because the phonons or, or the external heat bath, they remember which is the correct direction of the energy, which direction is, takes, uh, you know, lowers the energy, and they break the symmetry basically. And, and basically select the, this lower Floquet band as the, as the full band, okay? Okay, and can then, I ask another question? <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Uh, I mean, but what you're saying, so I, I don't, can you rephrase this in some way? Because I find it confusing, right? Because you're saying, if I don't allow Floquet processes, this happens fine, this is, I, I, I can see that. Then you say, what is, and then the, the gauge I agree would be broken because, yeah. You, pick, you, you know, you, you stop the thing that would make right. it. Yeah. So, but then you're saying the phonons will break it. But I mean, I am breaking it when I'm picking the... No, no. So I, 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 I could have drawn these bands the other way around, right? Yes, yes. And you could have drawn these bands the other way around. And then uh, this, this you're absolutely right. So I could have drawn uh, this, this part where, uh, I don't know, it's a snake or whatever, this, this green part, this band with the full, with the electrons. I could have drawn it at the top and, and the, the blue band, which is empty, I could have put at the bottom. But there is a distinction between the two bands. So you see the, this uh, band here at the bottom, this is, I could identify it by saying, this is the band where at large K, you know, here, it's a valence band. And that's the state that's full. That's the band that's going to be full. It doesn't matter how you, how you draw it. Okay, okay so and, and then you are saying, but this is something external to the statement, the steady state is a Gibbs state, I mean. 
yeah, so, so right, so, so the steady state is a gift I guess it's an extra yeah. non-trivial observation. Yeah, the gift state is a, is a gift state, and it matters that the bands that get selected, you're right, the bands that get filled, the, the bands which plays the role of the valence band in this gift state is the one which for large K is, is, is the valence band. Is this easy to explain? Or? Yeah. It just it's just a matter of if you, I don't allow yeah I, I can explain maybe it'll be clear in a second I, I yeah okay if if not I can ask you again later no, no, I think, I think it'll be clear. so 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 let let's see if I start off with this band let let's see what the dynamics are okay okay and and uh, the, the, so now let me okay so so the way that my answer to your question uh, actually goes through trying to understand what happens if you do turn on the flocker block. So now let me turn them on, okay? So if I do turn them on, you know, then I could allow this process, okay? That's an allowed process, okay? Now, what would be the dynamics now? So now there is an excitation in this upper Floquet band. Now the phonons, phonons want to, now this is the, the answer to your question. The phonons are at zero, let's assume that they are at zero temperature, just for the sake of discussion, okay? So they want to basically relax, they want to basically relax energy from the system, right? They don't care about quasi energy, they, they want to relax energy from the system. So basically what they will cause, they'll cause this elect, electron to basically trickle down, emit phonons and trickle down until it reaches the bottom of this band. Okay, and, it, it, and when it reaches the bottom, near the bottom of these bands, here we said there is a strong hybridization. So now a phonon can actually, uh, you know, relax it back down to to uh, to the to the valence band. Now the, the reason the, the reason why this band is selected is the slow this uh, this band is selected as the field band is that if I turn off these processes here, then you know uh, electrons that are kind of trickling down through the phonons to to this edge of the brilliant zone they have no way of actually reaching back up and mixing over here. They just pile up here and the phonons actually. They determine the, the direction that the band is getting pulled. The, the, since the phonons always want to reduce the energy, they would select the band uh, with, you know, this, this band here that has this balance band on the wings uh, as the bands that are going to get full in the system. And, and once I break this, uh, uh, you know, weird conservation law, I allow this Floquet-Unclaw processes, they're always there. Then, then I deviate from this. Oops, I deviate from this. Uh, sorry. Then I deviate from this state, and and the dynamics uh, are this trickle down dynamics. There's an excitation that's formed due to this radiative recombination. That's uh, that's a transition which emits a photon. Okay, it's really it's just an electron hole recombination. It's it's drawn in a confusing way, but the thing is, what's happening here is that electron in the conduction band. Is emitting a phonon and basically recombining with a hole in the valence band, and then you know this kind of relaxes towards the 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 um, you know the the this minima of the Floquet band and, and then relaxes back. And and the fact that the phonons actually want to reduce energy that's what that's the what breaks the symmetry between these two bands. I don't know that does that answer your question. Yeah, it's clear. Clear. Okay. okay. Okay, so so if you want to describe this more quantitatively, um, okay, so we, we need to use some sort of uh, equation of motions, and and uh, you know the one thing that you try to do uh, is to try to use an effective kinetic equation. The kinetic equation would be an equation for the basically occupations of uh, states in the Floquet bands, and there will be all kinds of transition rates between different uh, states f and f bar mean the uh, you know f is the then is the occupation number of the electrons in the state and f bar is the occupation number of holes. One question, just to I want to stress this is using this kinetic equation is only valid if the scattering rates are small enough. For example, they should be smaller than this uh, Floquet gap. Basically, what happens is if, if the scattering rate become too large, you know, the scattering rates actually broaden the Floquet the, the states. 
And if the states are, are broader than the actual uh, gap that occurs at the resonance, the floquet states themselves are not meaning, meaningful. So in other words, if the scattering rates are uh, too large, the floquet states are not meaningful because an electron scatters out of the floquet states before it's able to do even one interesting oscillation. Okay. So this is a limit we have to kind of check in the end that's actually, you know, in the steady state we get, we need to check that this is, a, uh, this actually is satisfied, that the scattering rates are indeed satisfy this type of uh, uh, inequality. Okay. So we could stay, it, it looks like a horrible mess. Like you have all these rates and you have to solve and, uh, but basically we, uh, there's, the, Lots of, you know, we already discussed kind of what would be the more or less the dynamics. There's also, you know, a lot of things you could say analytically. For example, you could try to ask, um, you know, what would be the density? So, so due to this trickle down dynamics, maybe I should say, I have not stressed this, due to this trickle down dynamics, so electron recombines and appears down here, they would be uh, basically, a, if you want, a bottleneck at the band minima, okay? Uh, and there will be basically uh, some distribution of holes near the minima of the Fouquet band over here, near the resonance of the, uh, uh, sorry, there will be a distribution of electrons in the upper band and holes in the lower band. And we can, uh, we can ask, what is the density of this, uh, elect this excited, we call this excited electrons and, and holes? What is the density of them? And uh, you know, one thing you could see, you could kind of, um, you know, you can get a power law basically by noting that uh, the recombination, the the rate of recombination of electrons from the from this lower band to the upper band is just a constant. It's because the density is very close to one here and very close to zero in the uh, in the upper band. The density so. So therefore, you know, the, the rate, the recombination rate or the, right, just depends on some, uh, you know, on some rates, on some kind of matrix elements and density of states. However, this, the, the, this interband relaxation, that's a different story because here there's a, a very dilute gas of electrons near, near this uh, band bottom and the very dilute gas of holes near the uh, top of this band. And basically for a interband relaxation to occur, an electron needs to find a hole. So basically uh, this rate, this interband relaxation rate will be proportional to the density squared because you know, one, one factor of the density comes from the density of electrons and the other one comes from the density of holes. And if you do that, uh, if you take this you know, equation seriously, you can see that uh, the density of excited electrons or holes, same, would, uh, would scale as a square root of uh, the ratio of the microscopic rates, okay? Um, and, and we could check that. Uh, you could also discuss the density of, uh, you know, excited holes and electrons in, in the edge states. Uh, here you get a different power, a power of one quarter. Uh, let me not get into this because it's more complicated. Uh, and and we and what we want to do is actually solve the system numerically. Um, so we, we took uh, basically we, we wanted to solve it on a cylinder because uh, or you know a system with edges because we wanted to see the distribution of the edge states. The reason is that we wanted to see if we can get some quantized transport out of this system. Okay, so what you can see here is the distribution of these excited electrons as we basically increase this parameter kappa. Kappa is the ratio of, of the stronger kappa get, the larger kappa gets, the, the larger this radiative recombination becomes. So more and more floquet umklop processes. So you see that this density grows. Uh, Sorry, can I, can I, what are you actually solving yeah. here? What are actually solving here? Is it? Yeah, so we're solving, problem with solving a, a kinetic equation. All right, in which we're allowing both momentum and uh, energy and quasi energy relaxation. So we have, say, we have a grid, a gr we're numerically solving the following problem. We have a grid of momenta in the pre-lointon, two-dimensional pre-lointon. 
right? Each of these momenta has uh, you know, an occupation of electrons in, 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 the, in, what, in, the, in the two bands, in the two Fouquet bands, and there's transition rates between them. And we're just solving this kinetic equation. Okay. And uh, so, so, right. And we're solving it not just in a two dimensional system, but also in a two dimensional system with edges. That actually is, is more complicated because there's no transition symmetry in one direction. So you cannot use moment, really use momentum states in one direction. Uh, but, you know, let me not get into this technical details. So you can think where we're solving a, a uh, you know, two-dimensional kinetic equation. Here I'm showing you basically the, 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 these kind of pockets of electron, excited electrons, which increase as I increase the floquet uh processes of so this radiative recombination. I, okay, I kind of just tune up these parameters. The reason why you see them in pockets is that you have, uh, you know, the, the for this, you know, the, re, the system really has C4 symmetry, so um, you know, the, 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 the band minimum is not completely circular. Um, and let me just show you this. And, before I sh and you can see these parallels that I've discussed. This is the parallel of the densities. There's a parallel of a quarter and, and, the, and half, which for the edge, for the edge density and for the, for the bulk density of excited particles. And then going back here, uh, the interesting thing is, uh, is to look, the interesting thing here is to look at the occupation of the electrons in the edge state. So you can, the, the, I think this is the kind of most interesting, of, this is what we were looking for basically. We wanted to understand whether you were going to see something that looks like a Fermi distribution in the Floquet states. The reason why this is maybe you no know, question is that these Floquet states, they, they're, they're not even there in the, in, in the static system. In the static system, there are no edge states. The, the edge states are just some sort of a very weird combination, superposition of valence and conduction states that occur only in the driven system. And it's not clear how to actually, how electrons would actually uh, occupy the states. But uh, the way this kinetic, I mean, the way this particle kinetic works is that you do actually get something that's very, very close to a Fermi Dirac distribution in the in in the uh, in the edge state, and and the reason this is good, this basically if we get a Fermi Dirac distribution, we could hope to get a quantized transport if we are able to control the Fermi level. Okay, but the question whether it's possible is it, is it possible to control the Fermi level or not? Uh, and, and that's, uh, I think, another interesting story. Let me just say it very briefly. If you just try to come with a regular reservoir, it's not going to work. Uh, you will not be able to control the Fermi level. You're just going to induce a lot, a lot of excitations. The reason is that you know, due to this, uh, the drive, an electron way below, if you take a reservoir with some Fermi level, the ele electron deep below the Fermi level of the reservoir can actually absorb photons and go into your system. And, and the same way the, the uh, an electron from your system can actually absorb photons and go to a high energy state in the reservoir. So the, the Fermi level of the reservoir doesn't actually induce the Fermi level in the system. So it's very hard using, uh, this, using now a reservoir to control the Fermi level. And therefore, it would be extremely hard to see any sort of transport or quantized transport in the system because it's not to see quantized transport say, in a two terminal experiment, you need to control the Fermi level in the edge states. But you can do this actually by uh, there's a way to remedy this, and basically, is to think about just blocking all of the unwanted channels. And, and, and you could do that basically by placing an energy filter between your uh, reservoir and your system. And uh, if we did that, we simulated the situation where you have a reservoir uh, and a system, but in the between them, we put filters. And using these filters, we, you could just control the, the, basically the position of the Fermi level in the edge state that I've shown you before. 
So the conclusion from this, at least is in principle, if you're in, indeed in the regime where, uh, you know, you, 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 the, 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 there's a good coupling to phonons and they, you know, they give you a steady state that looks close to the steady state we've been discussing. Uh, and basically they, they, they are effective at, at uh, basically taking out uh, energy from the system. Then there is hope of seeing something that's very close to quantized transport, even in the Floquet system, uh, if, if you use this filter leads, okay? So that's the story about the, the well, there's not a lot of time. So let me just do this quickly. Um, so um, so that, that was like, um, you know, a discussion about the steady state of the, of the topological Floquet system. I want to discuss a little bit about this uh, Floquet liquid crystals. I think they're interesting. So now, before I discuss the half field system, now I want to consider a system that has, is, is doped. So I'm, I'm, if the system is doped, then there is a, a Fermi in the steady state, at least in this perfect steady state I've described, the, this uh, limit where the Floquet and processes are turned off, then we have this ring-shaped Fermi surface in the bottom of the band, in, in the bottom of the, <clears throat> say, uh, you know, um, upper Floquet band. And a very similar situation to what happened in the Rashba band can occur. So the system can break symmetry in the steady state, break symmetry, <clears throat> and basically have that the steady state shows you uh, a Fermi surface which has this banana shape um, and basically gives you a, a ferromagnetic pneumatic phase. Um, of course, you know, if you have to do this, you, you need to have interactions and, and you have a more complicated, you know, you have to basically have a kinetic equation that in, includes also the interactions, uh, electron, electron scattering. The way we study this technically is basically <clears throat> by looking at a coupled uh, set of equations that one of them is a, like a hartree fock equation, a mean field equation for the order parameters, which is coupled to a kinetic equation. So the, the input of the kinetic equation <clears throat> are the, is the mean field solution. And basically what you're trying to find is a consistent steady state, which is a steady state, uh, which is consistent state of the mean field and also solve for a steady state of the kinetic equation. So it's, you have to, you're finding a consistent steady state solution for both of these equations. Um, and, and again, we, we do this for this uh, two-dimensional system. Um, and, and just to show you the, uh, kind of a, the phase diagram we get, um, so, you know, we, we remember before I, we discussed that the, there is a divergence uh, of the density of states at the band bottom. So indeed, you see that, uh, uh, you know, if you look, this is the, the the interaction strength, and this is the normalized doping. So you see that at an, a doping, which is very close to the band bottom, um, you have uh, basically a, a strong suppression and reduction of the critical uh, interaction strength as you expect in a ferromagnetic transition. Um, now, the interesting thing about this phase uh, is that it, this is actually the, the ferromagnetic pneumatic phase you have here is actually a state that's uh, you know, it's a unique to a Floquet system. And the reason is that the, remember the, 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 the order parameter, uh, there's a pneumatic order parameter, but it's also a, a ferromagnetic order parameter because the fact that you basically, that you have no, a banana shaped Fermi surface also means that you have a broken spin direction or, you know, you, you have a ferromagnetic state, but the direction of this ferromagnetic state actually rotates as a function of time. It rotates as a function of time with the frequency of the drive. Um, and and uh, you, know, you could plot the different harmonics uh, in this broken symmetry state. Um, and, and basically there's an interesting symmetry breaking here that occurs because you have, you're breaking the, the order parameter you're breaking is, is kind of a U1 cross U1 order parameter. There's a U1 order parameter of the spins in the plane, but there's also the phase of the rotation of the spins for, relative to the drive. And out of this U1 cross U1, you, you, you're only left with a kind of a U1 
uh, order parameter. So that's also a situation which is, uh, you know, which is special to this Fouquet system. The fact that you know you, you, there's a symmetry, there's a U1 symmetry both to the uh, spin and also to the relative phase between the drive and the uh, rotation of the spins of the order parameter. Uh, now, one thing maybe to ask is why do you have this upturn in the critical interaction strength? Right, because you expect that this uh, line would actually go down, uh, continue going down because the, of the divergence of the density of states. But you know, you really have to ask yourself: you know, uh, do we have a well-defined firm? When do we have a well-defined firm C in this situation? When, when is the uh, temperature of the chemical potential of the temperature? When is it a, a sufficiently large number that we can think about as, as a metal? Uh, like a degenerate Fermi gas, in which case we, we expect to see strong transition. And when is this ratio smaller than one, for which then we can think about it like a non degenerate Fermi gas or maybe some sort of a thermal, thermal insulator? Um, and, and you can see that if you plot this ratio, you can see that there's basically two regimes. There's one regime uh, at small doping uh, for which the, the, there's a lot, the, the ratio between excitations and, and doping is such that the system is really in a, what we call a Floquet insulator, which really means it's just a non-degenerate Fermi gas. And this is this regime over here. And there's a different regime of the Floquet metal um, for which there's a well-defined kind of Fermi surface and the system is, looks like a non-degenerate Fermi gas. And you know, to see this transition, the Floquet insulator is no good. And that's why, you know, at small doping, there is a, this upturn and, and the critical interaction goes back up. Because basically this regime, um, this regime over here is where you get this Floquet insulator. And that's where uh, basically the, the, the Fermi gas at, at in, in, uh, is really a very, it's, it's very non, it's like a non-degenerate Fermi gas and, and uh, you know, which means that the interaction strength would, would it would be hard to see the transition and interaction strength goes up. Okay, so I think my time is up. Um, so I've discussed this uh, external heat bath scenario. There's also an interesting, uh, uh, you know, as we said, there's also this, this direction uh, uh, of looking at disorder system. Uh, many, you know, people in the audience were, you know, you know did a lot of important work on this. Um, let me just say that this, this resonant uh, transition setup can also induce interesting states uh, uh, that, that can give you a steady state for a strongly disordered system. Uh, for example, you could, if you think about, you could start with a situation, starting off with a situation where you already have a, a, a topological phase. So like a, say in a magnetically dope 3D topologic insert, you can have a, quantum monotonous Hall effect at, at, the, at the, the surface. Uh, and in this case, uh, basically uh, what you get is you get two churn bands, but you have to remember, if you remember your quantum Hall physics, you know that these, these churn bands in a strongly disordered system, what they really have is they really have a kind of a, an energy which carries the churn number and which is delocalized and the rest of the energy is the system is completely localized. So this, the, the, the localized states are plotted here in this caricature by uh, Purple. Um, and if you plot the, the energy as a function of, the churn number as a function of energy, you know, you start off with churn number zero and then you switch to churn number one and then you go back to churn number zero. Um, and, and these bands basically are, these states are to be localized states as I said. Now, if you, if you couple these states using some drive, uh, what you do is you basically you 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 basically create a you can create a direct coupling between these two delocalized bands, which basically would cause them to annihilate the, the churn numbers to annihilate, and you'll end up with a system with churn number zero. Uh, but uh, the system would the system would have churn number zero, but nevertheless, you know, you'll not be able to get rid of the edge states. So this is this anomalous Floquet Anderson insulator. Uh, and you know this has you know this anomalous Floquet Anderson insulator has you know many interesting properties. For example, this uh, 
quantize the nonlinear transport. And, and you know, so I'm, what I'm saying is that this could also be observed in strongly disordered uh, solids, uh, you know, in the quantum, which are in the quantum anomalous hold state, and then hopefully you apply drag. So I think that's more or less what I want to say. Uh, so this is my summary. So I've discussed the steady states of Lucchetti eyes. Uh, I think the important take home message is that it's possible to observe Fermi level of the edge states under appropriate conditions. And it's also possible to control it using energy filter leads. Um, you know, and then I've also discussed how you could basically uh, use this kind of Lucchetti band structure to um, you know, to induce correlated states, and, and these correlated states can have uh, oscillating order parameters, which are not possible in equilibrium. I think there are many questions, open questions, uh, you know, what other transport properties can we see that have some quantized properties? For example, can we do some sort of quantized heat transport? Uh, what the kind of you know, candidate materials can we implement these type of things? Uh, interesting question is uh, what about fluctuations? For example, can we see KT like physics in the, sorry, can we see KT like physics uh, in a two dimensional system? Can we see something that's analogous to a Gaussian mode? And then, you know, there's other interesting engineered bands like, you know, systems with flat bands or twisted bilayer in which you can actually, uh, a drive would actually, um, create a dramatic effect. For example, if you take a system, which is a, you know, it's twisted, twisted bilayer system away from the magic angle, uh, where it's hard to observe any flat bands and to add a drive on top of it, um, you know, you, you dramatically flatten the bands and, and get a very, so very dramatic effect uh, on the band structure. So that's another kind of venue for, for game engineering. Okay, so with that, I'll end. <laughs>